Well, it's good to see all of you tonight, and uh, welcome you to this first night of our Prophecy Conference, and great to have a new friend, uh, Musab, with us, um, and you've probably heard about him. That's why you're here. Um, yeah, let's give him a round. Welcome him. Thank you. We are going to uh, spend about the next 35 or 40 minutes um, really kind of in a dialogue. Um, hopefully, he's going to do most of the talking and tell his story. I, uh, Musab, I just finished reading your book today. I was down to the last 10 pages, and it was absolutely riveting. Um, I found myself going through a million emotions when I read it, everything from um, intrigue to sadness to um, love, and I so appreciate your story, and now that I know you, I so appreciate you, and, and I, I wonder if uh, maybe you could begin tonight by kind of setting up your early life as you grew up and your relationship you had with your family and kind of what you saw living where you did at the time that you did. First of all, I would uh, love to say that I'm uh, grateful and uh, thankful for this invitation. It's a great honor and a privilege to be here. Um, second, uh, this is an amazing story. When I read about myself sometimes, I say, <laughs> who the heck is this guy and what he went through? And uh, I just see the great work of God. I am not a hero, and uh, I am just another sinner that God used, and uh, all the glory goes to Him. Um, there is a please to, to allow me to share this uh, uh, yeah. little joke. Okay. Um, do, do you remember the donkey that Jesus Christ used to enter Jerusalem? Next day, he told his mother, I want to go to Jerusalem. She told him, don't go to Jerusalem. People will stone you. You're, you're a donkey. You're not allowed to go there. He said, yesterday, people put their clothes on the, uh, on the ground for me, and they honored me, and uh, it was a great privilege to go there. She told him, don't go. He didn't listen, and he went on his own. And he came back home crying. And she told him, what happened? He said, they stoned me. She told him, Mom, yesterday you were a ride, the ride of the king. And that's why people honored you. It wasn't about you. And sometimes some of us, we think that it's about us. And I like to remind myself with this joke, the joke of the donkey. And it's a great honor to be the ride of the Lord. And it's a great honor uh, to be used uh, by the Lord. I see nobody laughed for the joke. <laughs> there you go. There you go. They laugh okay. later. I, I can. It's just the and, way we do it here. We just can, laugh later. I can ask. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a, a great joke teller, so please. <laughs> okay. Uh, one, uh, one more thing. This is a great church. Yeah. You're going to tell another joke? No, no. Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 do you accept, do you accept uh, uh, an ex-terrorist? Yes, we, we, would, we have a special, I, the, special place for you here. Okay, now I know that they agree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. so, so, your story, growing up. I grew up in one of the most religious uh, Muslim families in the Middle East. Uh, my father is uh, one of the founders of the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, one of the founders of the uh, Hamas movement. In fact, uh, my family leads the Islamic Sunni revolution in the Middle East. And uh, I was part of that project. I was willing at some point of my life to sacrifice myself for the cause of Islam. That was for real. I was a dedicated Muslim. I went to the mosque five times a day. And uh, I was arrested by the Israeli soldiers. I spent 29 months in Israeli prisons for the cause of Islam. Uh, I was responsible for my family. For, um, I didn't live my childhood to take care of my mother and my brothers uh, because my father was gone most of the time uh, in Israeli prisons also for the cause of Islam, for the cause of 
uh, uh, Palestine. And uh, this is where I'm coming from in general. Um, I love the, the God of Islam. I love the, the Quran. I memorized uh, almost half of the Quran, word by word. And uh, I studied the, uh, the language of the Quran that most Muslims and Arabs don't understand. Uh, I uh, studied the Hadith. I went to Islamic Sharia school. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that Islam would be the solution for humanity. Um, and uh, I was willing to die for that cause. Um, of course, I, am not, I wasn't the only one. This is my family. This is where I'm coming from. So for people um, who uh, don't know uh, about my story, I am not just a traditional Muslim who became a Christian because uh, Christianity is more fun. Um, I was a kind of uh, prince in my society. Sorry for uh, that. Uh, but uh, I am coming from a royal family. Um, my father is very influential. He's still very influential in the uh, West Bank. And... Um, I cannot, it's very hard for me sometimes to believe that I'm sitting in a church here and uh, talking as a Christian and uh, sharing with my Christian uh, brothers and sisters. I would, I would never think that I would be doing this um, 15 years ago. So this is where I'm coming from. And uh, Yeah, you know, one of the things I thought was really intriguing in your story, you talked about... Um, things started to change. You began to see things and hear things, and, and something didn't line up. You saw your father as a, as a peaceable man who, who loved, um, you know, Allah, and, and yet at the same time you saw some of the, the innocent people that were suffering, and, and you started to go through what I saw was really tension in your life and, uh, and that beginning of a journey that would take many years to get you to the place of, of understanding you know, what was really going on, what was happening. Um, and I, it, it kind of seemed to, to culminate in, or, or come to a, or to a rise in, when you were like about 18, I think, you were imprisoned um, the first time, yes. is that correct? Yes, I was arrested when I was 18, Yeah. the first time. And that experience was not a good one. Can you share some of that experience? Yes. Um, as, as I said, uh, I uh, was dedicated to the uh, cause of Islam. I wanted the entire world to become uh, uh, an Islamic uh, uh, nation. Uh -huh. And uh, why? Because uh, the, the goal of most Muslims, even terrorists, uh, is uh, to bring uh, happiness and justice to humanity. Uh -huh. And uh, they think that they can establish that uh, by uh, converting everybody to Islam. And uh, there is no problem for the God of Islam if they have to kill millions of people in order to achieve that noble goal mm -hmm. of bringing justice and happiness to all humankind. Mm -hmm. So um, at that uh, level, um, uh, as a Palestinian who was witnessing for uh, uh, a lot of killing, a lot of violence, uh, many of my uh, friends uh, were killed uh, and they were children. And uh, my father was arrested. We were uh, living under occupation. And uh, I had uh, many uh, political uh, reasons to uh, hate uh, the Israelis. And from the other hand, I had ideological reasons because the God of Islam hates Jews. The God of Islam hates Jews and music. And music. Because of that, you don't, you don't find the God of Islam uh, or uh, any music in uh, a mosque right. or uh, any Muslim uh, society. And uh, so I had enough reasons to hit the Jews and uh, to fight them. So by the, eight, uh, the age of 18, um, I was, you can say, full of hate, and I wanted to take revenge. So um, I tried to buy uh, guns in order to take uh, revenge, and uh, fortunately, I was caught before I did anything with those guns. Uh, now, I was tortured in an Israeli prison. Uh, I stayed in a, a facility underground uh, for three months. Uh, and it was a very intense uh, investigation. They didn't let me sleep for uh, many nights. I was beaten almost uh, to death. 
Um, and uh, I didn't see the sun for three months. Uh, during that time, the Israeli Shimbit, the Israeli intelligence, which is uh, like uh, the FBI here in the United States, came and uh, offered me to work for them. So I uh, said, are those guys crazy or what? They arrested my father 13 times. They killed my friends. They occupied our country. Now they're arresting me and torturing me, and they're asking me to work for them. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I thought that would be a great opportunity to fool the Israeli Shimbet by playing double agent and uh, infiltrating the Israeli Shimbet and uh, destroy them from the inside. Mm. I was only 18 years old with those big uh, plans of uh, destruction. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and which is, which is normal for that region. I don't blame uh, uh, the new generation when they hate. I, I understand where they're coming from, and this is why today uh, I'm trying to deal with the root of the problem. Um, but d during that time in that, in that prison, I agreed uh, to work uh, for the Israeli Shembet, and they told me, now we cannot release you because uh, your news uh, uh, is everywhere. And the people know that you were arrested uh, for uh, 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 buying guns and trying to kill us. And uh, we don't tolerate with this type of uh, uh, terrorists. So we need to send you to jail, like all other Hamas members. And um, for a short time. So they sent me to prison, and uh, I had to stay there for 16 months. That was the short time that mm. they promised. And um, during the time in prison, I found that Hamas leaders and the Hamas security wing was torturing Hamas, other Hamas members. They tortured hundreds of prisoners, and several of them were killed. Now, for me, I am the son of a top Hamas leader in prison, and I had a... a special position that they didn't allow them to torture me while I was in a relationship with the Shembet. Practically, I was a collaborator. Practically, I was a member of the Shembet, and they ignored that fact uh, to, to torture me or uh, even do anything against me uh, while they tortured many other people who were uh, suspicious of having a relationship with the Shembet. Now, Witnessing this type of torture, which was really brutal, and uh, uh, many people were killed, uh, to a level that they insert needles under their fingernails, they burn their bodies, they uh, didn't let them, let them sleep for months. And we're talking that I saw a face of, uh, uh, like how a human being can be bad against his brother, in humanity and I was amazed by that so I start to ask myself this question this is a long story of transformation and I can write a book only about the experience in prison but all I can say that this that experience opened my eyes and had me ask myself this question What's the difference between the Israeli torture and the Palestinian torture? Why do I hate Israel? Because it tortured me and I want to take revenge from them. And I don't want to take revenge from Hamas because it's torturing my own friends. And they could also torture me, but because I'm the son of a top Hamas leader, they did not. And I blamed people, and I thought the problem was in Hamas. I thought the problem was in people who don't understand Islam. And uh, I decided just to get out of Hamas and go look for my life after prison. I decided not even to work for the Shembet because I, do, I didn't want to end up working also for my enemies. Mm. 